Hey guys, thanks for joining me again today. Um, I just want to share with you another code example. This case um, is called the Constellation Wizard. Um, the idea for this code example is really to just allow you to import large constellations, um, save these constellations um, to like TLE files and save all the results, um, and then just load them in instead of having to go rebuild them every time um, and go through the sort of arduous process of loading in individual satellites. This is going to load in like chunks of satellites or constellations for you. Um, so you can start doing analysis much uh, more smoothly. OK, um, so I just want to show you that example. Um, we have this up on our GitHub. Um, but once you get that, uh, I just want to walk you through this one. This is the Constellation Wizard UI. Uh, in order to run this, you're going to need a Python um, and a Jupyter Notebook. That's how this one is built. Uh, in this case, all I'm going to do is execute this script right here, and it pops up with this user interface. And it attaches to your currently running SDK scenario. The way this works, um, here is this Constellation Wizard UI. I have a list of already pre-saved uh, constellations. Um, in this list, you'll see there's Celeste Track. Um, so you can actually pull from uh, about 50 or so constellations already pre-built up on Celeste Track. Um, in this case, I'm going to load in the SpaceX constellation um, as a visual object in MTO. And all I have to do in this case is just select SpaceX for the constellation, and then click Load as an MTO. And that'll take about 30 seconds or so, just because there's so many satellites. There's about 5,000. Uh, but then we can continue on with this analysis. Now that Starlink constellation is loaded in our scenario um, as an MTO, if I were to go and animate this scenario, you would see all these satellites move around. There's about 5,000 or so being shown here. And let's say you want to do some sort of analysis with this Starlink constellation. Typically, what you might want to do is reduce the number of satellites, the number of computations that are necessary. Uh, so one thing we could do is run this deck access option. And what that'll do is limit the number of satellites just to the ones in our field of view. Um, so I'm actually going to select the AGI facility and then limit the number of satellites to be um, a sensor's field of view above AGI. Um, and I'm just going to run deck access right over here for uh, one second just to really just grab a snapshot of all the satellites overhead. And then click this Run Deck Access button. Uh, when I do, it says there are 73 satellites overhead. Um, and what I can actually also do now is save this, uh, these satellites to their own constellation. So I can come up here and say uh, SpaceX or Starlink, um, and then with access. So these are going to be all the satellites overhead. I can click this Save Deck Access button. And it's going to say, do you want to save this as a new constellation? I'll say yes. Uh, and then I can come down here in my drop-down list. I can load in this SpaceX with access uh, constellation. Um, maybe just give it a different color, such as magenta in this case. Click Load as an MTO. Uh, and then I can see that in my scenario. Um, so if I now look at my scenario, these are all the satellites that are currently overhead. And then I can go and run further um, analysis on that. So I'm not going to go th through all that in this video. Um, I've already done that in another. Uh, which will explain the rest of the buttons and tools here to help you run those analysis. So now that I've gone through the overview, I just want to show you how, where you can grab it. Uh, that is going to be on our GitHub, on our analytical graphics GitHub, SDK code examples, um, SDK code examples automation. And then this is a Python script, so it's going to be under Python. And then it's going to be Constellation Wizard. So that's how you grab it, guys. Um, go grab it, start doing um, fun analysis with your constellations.